So good evening. Uh, this is the bond meeting for uh, August. Today is August 15th, and the items presented on tonight's meeting are eligible to be uh, presented during the September 11th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. We have three items on tonight's agenda. One is 318, 319 Water Street. Uh, the second item on tonight's agenda is going to be 605 Graham Street. And the third item for tonight's agenda is going to be 802 Blanco 111 uh, Becker. So um, there are some new people. Some of you have participated on those already. Uh, I will introduce the applicant and the applicants are going to present their project. I have some of the documents here I can share. And if you guys, the applicant, have other things that you want to share on your screen, feel free to do it. Um, as I mentioned, the meeting is going to be recorded and people can uh, reference back to this item later on. Uh, as I mentioned, the first item on tonight's agenda is the uh, Water Street project. And uh, further, Federico Cavazzo is um, Guillermo Cavazzo's son, and Guillermo is the applicant for this site. Let me start sharing my screen. We have a PowerPoint as well to share whenever if, you're done. If you want to share your site, it's, you can do it because then you can control changing the documents. It's easier then. Great, we'll do that. Yeah, share my screen. Yes, so as I was mentioning, uh, the project that waters is zone C3. It's a commercial zoning category. And the request is for a multifamily development with 18 units per acre. It requires, you're allowed to have multifamily development on C3 zoning category, but you need a special use permit. A uh, special, special use permit is a site specific to, to type of approval and uh, the approval that goes through city council, it's for it would represent the number of units, the location, the parking, the setbacks, landscape, all those items need to be presented on that site for the special use permit. Great, should we take it away? Yes, please. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for the time. This is Federico Cavazos. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, we want to um, talk a little bit about this project because we think it's um, a great opportunity for the city. So just so everyone is aware of the site in question on Water Street, um, it's kind of nestled in the triangle between 46 Main Street and I-10. Um, it's surrounded primarily by commercial properties right now. It's a little over five acres. It's just southeast of the HEB. Um, it's a wonderful little piece of property off of the um, circular drive. It has access from the north, the northeast, and the west. So in that way, um, it's accommodated very well. And it's just north of a piece of property that is currently being developed um, into some kind of um, commercial here. Uh, when you look at the, the property in an aerial, many of the things that we love about it uh, jump out and that we'd like to celebrate, namely that it has many wonderful trees on it. Um, as Sarah mentioned, this is a C3 community commercial piece of property, which means that um, we are requesting a special use permit to be able to um, develop it at multifamily with 18 units uh, per acre. Um, this project does not exceed that. Um, and that is very intentionally a response to what's happening on the property. Um, but you can see all the surrounding streets there and the property to the south, which uh, doesn't look like that anymore. You'll see some pictures shortly. Um, but it's not surrounded by single family. Um, it's not, not near that kind of a situation. It really is um, uh, kind of surrounded by commercial. So every great project starts off with setting goals for the project. And there are some really ambitious ones here that we think um, uh, make, make this stand out. The first is that the entire plan that you're gonna see protects every single heritage oak trees. We know that there are ways of not protecting them um, and um, that it's frankly easier to not do that, but um, they're pretty amazing specimens there. Um, the second commitment on the project is to protect or relocate 
not only the heritage oak trees, but the legacy oak trees. So, um, you know, many, many, you know, the goal is to save every single one of those trees on the site. The second is we think that this project will offer a very unique kind of a living opportunity for people who wish to live in Bernie, which is townhomes. So um, um, two story, um, um, one and two bedroom units um, that are grouped in groupings. So shared walls, but no units above any other unit. So each unit will have its own um, patio, its own entry that's kind of um, um, like a, a, a checkerboard with the unit next to it. So very uh, wonderful experience of entering into the unit. Um, other goals are we think that um, this area has a lot of business and that business benefits from, from people. So we think it is uh, a good location um, to have people living. There are many, many wonderful amenities um, around that area. Um, so we think that those uh, benefit each other, the housing and the commercial. And then just at a very high level, the plan that you're going to see is not at all the most efficient. It is nowhere near the most efficient thing you can do. It is by design um, about the quality of life of people who live there and about celebrating the trees that are there. So um, th there are there is a completely different approach than what you're going to see, which is to just raise the property, keep the trees on the perimeter and um, build, you know, type five over type one uh, apartments, uh, you know, five stories or three story type five townhomes. Um, those are both just the most common housing type out there. That's why you see them everywhere. That is not um, the approach with this project. So we just think it's unique in that way. Um, we keep showing pictures of the trees because they're just so so great. And um, all of these trees represent what what the project is designed around. So wonderful canopies. I mean, just the coolest live oak trees that you see. We, I mean, we just, you know, all this is coming already in Bernie, that it's just such a wonderful um, place to live. That's where uh, um, my dad lives. And um, with kind of the growth that's coming up, um, uh, there is obviously a demand for a place for people to sleep. Um, we know that single family homes are the most common type, um, but we do think that um, all of us at some point have rented at some point and there's there's um, great people um, who who would benefit from the opportunity to, to live in the city of Bernie. So um, just looking at what's predicted in terms of growth, um, if about basically over a third of residents um, typically rent in Bernie and with the growth expected, that's about 408 people looking to rent per year. So we think that there's a need here as well that this could satisfy in a way that other um, projects couldn't um, because of its because of its plan. So here's the site. You can see the kind of the roundabout on the top right. You can see all of the, the trees kind of grouped along the, the, the western 80% of the property um, and then all of the, the parking um, around it. So what you're seeing here is a conceptual site plan. So we are in the early phases of this project. That's why we're talking to you. Um, the, the primary um, building block are these um, five to six units of townhomes that are grouped. Um, but the way that this whole plan is designed around is the darker green trees are where all of the heritage trees are. So it's not driven by just logic and efficiency. It's driven by dancing all of the buildings and roads around the heritage trees. So you can see that that is what informs this, this approach. We also think it breaks up the experience very nicely east to west across the property. So there's not vast expanses of parking. And in fact, the parking is heavily shaded either by a building on its south or the wonderful canopy of these oak trees. These are very, very modest um, um, representations of the canopies of the trees. They're, they're quite a bit larger. And as we get in there and understand each particular shape of each tree, we have the ability to just tweak angles. And, you know, if we need to move something a few feet, if the arbor says something like that. So the second piece here is that um, you can see all the trees that are proposed to be relocated towards the east. So that's a commitment that we're making to um, distributing the trees across the property and the legacy trees um, um, would be relocated to the eastern piece of the property, those which are in place that are not uh, filled or trees that are not heritage that would remain in their location. Um, a lot of things are 
described here. I'll just talk through them. One is that um, parking is accommodated and, and only just. There's not a desire to overprovide on parking. Um, you can see the total impervious cover there, 56%. Um, um, so we're also being um, um, conservative with uh, you know, minimal amount of pervious cover. We know that that's always an issue. You can see the breakdown of the units there as well. It's um, a few more than half of two bedrooms versus um, one bedrooms. Um, so um, the and then kind of experientially, the idea is that these townhomes are not like they have wonderful space around them. That some of them, um, uh, you know, none of them are surrounded entirely by driveways. Some of them, like the northwestern one, for example, there's a wonderful kind of route to get there amongst the trees, any that you see that are a little pulled off of the road. So the idea is to create almost like a village atmosphere. So we have some pictures of a, of a development that was done similarly, just to help you understand what the quality of these spaces might be and, and how we're thinking. Uh, we're, we're both architects, just why. Um, this is the building block. It's a very conceptual plan. This is a, a two bedroom townhome, but it helps you understand kind of the quality of the spaces there. Um, these um, orient, they kind of um, flip-flop so that the entries stagger and um, each unit has its own like patio on the on one side uh, and, ent and entries on both sides and a patio on one. In fact, that's shaded um, in this case um, by the closet. Um, two bedrooms upstairs, a wonderful living and dining and kitchen on the ground floor. On the end unit, this is shown a typical middle unit. On the end units, there would be more windows. Um, um, on that facade. So um, we're just showing what would be in the middle of the sandwich. So um, worst case scenario, stucco is the primary uh, building material with shutters and then a standing seam roof. These are just very high level um, um, unit plans, not elaborate renderings given the early stage of the project. But the one bedroom unit is shown here as well. And it just gives you a sense of what the architecture will be. It's just gonna be simple um, gabled roofs um, but massing is intended to be, to be broken down by frequent changes in plane. We know that that's um, a common request <clears throat> among any development guidelines. Um, just a few things about this project financially. Based on the, the, the size of the project, we, we anticipate a tremendous tax impact for, for Bernie. Around We estimate around $18 million for the Bernie tax base. Um, a few other things. These are images of a piece of property that was developed um, with by, us, by us, by us. <laughs> um, about 15 years ago. Yeah. And um, there were not the gifts of these trees. We had to plant our own trees on this property. But you can see that this is the kind of space that is created between them. So they are very intentionally about places people want to be, not just about profit. Um, we cho we're choosing that the more expensive route over what's happening just to the south of us. You can see that this commercial development, which would not require a special use permit, um, there's there's no trees left on it uh, except for at the perimeter. So that property looked just like this one just a few months ago. You've surely driven by it, but we just think that these two images capture the contrast of what the project is trying to achieve. That's um, a different, I would just ask for the, that's a different project and there's more parts of it than the section that you're showing. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, so that concludes sort of the project there. Um, we just wanted to sit on the site plan to see if there were any um, comments or questions. So I can see we got quite a few people also um, joining us. Thank you all. Uh, does anybody has any questions, comments? for Federico and Guillermo about what he presented for the property at 318, 319 waters. Did you want to say anything else? Hmm? Did you want to say anything else? Um, no, I think uh, the bottom line is we think that this project will enhance the beauty of Bernie as opposed to that project south of this one, which is really almost a crime. Uh, what it does to people coming into Bernie um, is just really sad to see 
the uh, the the way that it's been mowed down to look like a hundred other cities that uh, do these large developments. And this property, since it's a C3, if somebody were to develop it as a C3, as, as, as everyone well knows, the people that rent commercial space, their first priority is visibility. So if this develops as a commercial property, it's likely that a majority of the trees will be removed so that the tenants can have visibility from the roads, which is always a important requirement for commercial tenants. We, uh, we own also commercial property in Laredo in addition to multifamily projects. And so we're pretty aware of what the market wants and uh, what what rents and what doesn't rent. Uh, the other, I guess one last thing is, these will be luxury townhomes. They'll be on the highest end of the rental market as far as cost per square foot, close to $2 a square foot to rent. So you'll have businessmen, professionals, uh, and other, I guess, prosperous people renting here, not, not uh, we don't envision that. Uh, it, don't envision that uh, um, this would be, um, th this is, this will be the high end of the market is all we're saying yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody has questions? Comments, if you can, you can unmute yourself and say your name and say your question. This is Jean. Um, I was just wondering, what are they putting in front of that that's going to be on the frontage road? Do you know yet? You're talking about the project that they were mentioning about the trees? Yes, the, pro the property that's between this development and the frontage road. Uh, that's a commercial development that's been entitled back in 2012, 13, some time ago. And yes, it is a commercial development, uh, but it's all that tract. And yes, they removed the trees that are there, the way he's mentioning. But the trees in the back are being preserved. And even though they were vested into old regulations, um, they still had to pay a hefty fine to removing those trees. Okay. Um, some of that probably is gonna start taking shape in the next year or so. I do have some comments about um, Guillermo's site really fast. Uh, some of this, as I mentioned, it's a site specific. So whenever this is presented to Planning and Zoning Commission and City Council, what is approved as the number of units, layout of the units, the internal circulation and all that uh, is what is supposed to be built on site. Um, the trees, uh, the regulation that we have in trees right now are way more restringent than on the other side. And yes, we learn with what happened in the past and we're trying to adjust and preservation is something that it really, um, got to us as needing to be up him. Um, some of staff has a little bit of concern, then Guillermo, I think we talked already uh, about the trees that you're proposing to relocate. Um, and it would be later on in the process to solve this. Uh, and also the access would be something that would have to need some more details of, for the project. Could you uh, clarify what you mean by um, access needs more detail? Uh, we requested a TIA and a turn sheet evaluation, and he was saying that the access was only going to be through a water street. 
uh, that's not represented in the drawing and that's a fire department requirement. So the fire and safety and welfare is what guides most of our decision, 99.9% .9 of the decisions towards this type of development. And uh, that needs to be cleared out with the fire department before this is made into an application. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I want to clarify something. There will be two access points, the one on Water Street Oops. and the one on Norris. But the one on Norris is only for access by the fire department. Those are all so, details that need to be presented in the drawing. and. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say okay. it it goes way more technical than, but I just want to people understand that if changes happen to the site plan between now and then, sometimes they have to do with uh, those types of um, code compliance part of it. Well, can you possibly clarify what access means? Is does it mean that all the tenants can come in on Norris? or just the fire department needs to have an access there? The fire department for sure needs a secondary access and it needs to be a standard all weather type of access. It's gonna look exactly the same as the other one. And if you're not gonna be gating in the community, people are normally gonna drive in and out whatever it's closer for them. But we can no, talk it, that it, later. It's not gonna be necessarily a discussion that we need to uh, have right now. Okay, we can talk about it later about access on both sides. Hey, Guillermo, Frederico. Um, historically, it could have been just fire access, but here lately, once you go over 30 units, um, they require full access for, for residents too. Okay, so the, the we should uh, count on providing resident access at both ends of the property? Yes, sir, I, I would for this one. That, that would be my advice. Yeah. Yeah, we just want to understand where you're coming from. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joshua. Anybody has more questions, comments? Seeing none, we can move through the next item on the agenda. Uh, excuse me, Sarah. Uh... Did you say this item would go to the September 11th? It's not going to be on the 18th? 18th of August? No, it's not. So the meeting was August 14th. It was at yesterday. The deadline to submit applications for the Planning and Zoning Commission is August 18, and the August the, the next Planning and Zoning Commission meeting is September 11. So the deadline okay. to submit application is 21 days before the meeting because we need to meet state requirements for notification. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Sir. Bye, everyone. Thanks. So as I mentioned before, the next item on the agenda is 605 Graham Street. Uh, we have the applicant online. Do you want? Oh, do you want me to share my screen? Oh. Yep, that's good. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, I don't have anything on my screen. Let me share my screen. So just um, explaining a little bit of the request. So the property is 605 gram. Uh, they are building it right now. And the request is for um, accessory dwelling unit on top of the garage. Uh, based on the regulation on R2, um, R2M zoning category R1M requires a special use permit for accessory dwelling. There are some requirements on size and all that uh, for to meet the accessory dwelling standard. And let me just zoom in. So this is the site plan, the house that is being built, the garage, and on top of the garage would be the dwelling. 
Yep, that's correct. So I think it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. The owners of the property are Bernie residents and they are involved with development in other areas and things, but they've been in Bernie a very long time. Um, and their intention with this house is to use it for themselves. Um, and the intention of this space over the garage is not to be a rental property or anything like that. It's just for their grown children when they come to visit. Um, so that's really all it is. It's just additional square footage for the house. And when we drew the plans, we didn't realize it was going to need a special permit, but through permitting, we found that out. And so this is it. So this has been done in the flats in this area of Bernie many, many times by other people, um, other builders. So uh, anyway, that's that's what the submittal is. It's not a, a rental thing or anything like that. Um, at least that's not the plan. So. And if the, my understanding is if it wants to be a rental, then it has, requires a whole other permitting process, correct, Sarah? If it is a short-term rental, yes, it requires a separate permit that it was approved recently. Okay, so yeah, this the intention of this is just to be part of the residence. It's just not attached to the residence. So I think that's all I needed to say about it. Yes, so as I mentioned, it's in the back of the property, it's an accessory dwelling unit. It requires a special use permit. It has to do with increased density of the area. This is why it goes through planning and zoning commission and city council for approval. Uh, so Graham Street, they have an alley going in the back. The, both lots are being uh, developed right now. And this would be in the back of the site. So you don't even see it from the, when you're driving um, at Graham looking at the site. That's correct. Does anybody have questions, comments? So uh, from what I understand, um, well, Bo's application is already um, submitted. So he will be on the next uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting on September 11. And the neighbors that are around the property are gonna receive um, letters talking about that and if you guys have questions you can send me an email or you can reach out to him however it however it's easier for you guys to um try to answer your questions very good and um we'll be moving to the third and last item of tonight's agenda so <clears throat> The property at 802 and 111 Becker, it's requesting as it would be a rezoning for the property at Becker and it would be a special use permit for both sites. Um, from uh, the conversations we had with the applicant, uh, the idea is to have a microbrewery at the site and uh, that based on our code, it's classified as craft alcohol production, and you're allowed to have a craft alcohol production in a C1 or a C2 with a special use permit. Another thing that it based on the location, you need to provide parking for your development within your boundaries. Of, um, street parking doesn't count. Some other areas of town, the river road overlay does, but this area doesn't. So all the parking needs to be contained within the boundaries of their development. Uh, Joshua, do you wanna take the screen or you want me to share the overall uh, site plan? You muted. I can take over the screen if that's okay. 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 I think you have to let it go, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. Are you able to see that? Yeah, now we can. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Josh Valenta. Um, I'm part of the development team on this one with um, the owner, Luis Romero. And uh, I'm a civil engineer. I'll be helping him with drainage and parking and all the different things. But um, 
if you're able to, or y'all, y'all are able to see my screen, the site plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Um, if you're able to see my screen, this is kind of a preliminary layout we're looking at. Um, it's not not final, of course, and that's what we're all here today for is to uh, get some input, see if there's uh, things about this plan that we can we can make better, and you know, uh, really become part of the community. Um, you know, this isn't meant to be a big commercial. Uh, development. This is meant to be a, a small restaurant and microbrewery that fits within the community and, and becomes really, you know, st staple of the area. And I'll let Luis get into kind of what his vision and, and uh, what he wants to put in there and how he wants it to look and brand and all that. But um, I'm definitely here to answer any, you know, engineering mm -hmm. and site plan related questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sarah, we'll just give a quick overview for the group. Uh, my name is Luis Romero. I'm one of the partners in this venture. Uh, Sarah mentioned we're looking for a special use permit for 802 Blanco and rezoning on 111 Becker. Uh, the goal would be to establish a, a restaurant uh, within the existing building, which is currently houses a uh, hair salon called Hairbenders there at 802 Blanco. The existing structure would be a restaurant uh, bar, we would have some outdoor seating over uh, next to the proposed brewery building. The uh, microbrewery would be somewhere in the uh, somewhere in that 50 to 20 feet range. Um, we, as as Josh mentioned, we would have the parking. Uh, the 111 Becker property would actually be the actual parking. For the for the two properties, and uh, you know the the goal here is to create a family friendly environment uh, where families can take their kids on the weekends, evenings, have dinner. Um, adults can have a cold beverage, um, and uh, you know hours of operation. We're anticipating somewhere in the, you know kind of at eleven a.m. to hit kind of that lunch crowd, professional lunch crowd, as well as on the weekend, and then go maybe somewhere in the up to eight thirty nine p.m time frame for for dinner um that's that's really it uh any trees on the property were are mostly residing on the front side of the 802 blanco property those would all be protected and, and those would all stay and then we're also looking to plant additional trees uh, as you can see on the left hand side there of the 802 um, blanco property as well as the 111 property as well yeah, so right in here, looking at doing some screening and different things to really give, you know, the pedestrian and vehicular buffer between things. So um, one thing I actually thought uh, was kind of interesting when I laid this out, Luis, was um, this is almost the exact same layout of Dodge and Duck, um, you know, staple of Bernie. So a corner kind of narrow lot, this configuration, and then a parking lot. Um, the facing the other direction behind it. Um, how it's not like that is this parking lot will actually be functional. <laughs> um, I, I would guess most people on the line here have been to Dodge and Duck and tried to pack in, uh, park in that back spot. And, you know, it's one way uh, you can barely get in there. And, you know, this will be, this will have a lot of space. This will meet, you know, current code requirements, provide for two-way traffic and, in adequate parking spots. So uh, we're not trying to over park it, but we're trying to give, you know, adequate room to move in and out of the site safely and, and make sure, you know, there's, there's no um, safety issues. Okay. Uh, Joshua and Luis. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the Becker Street's the only street that anybody parking in that parking lot can come out, can gain access to the parking lot. Yes, ma'am. So being that there's no light to turn left on is a park. So the parking lot's on Becker. I live like two houses down from there. And I, so I see in, a real uh, concern. I'm on the other side of the road with the okay. sidewalk. Somewhere over there. Yes, right there with the sidewalk. My yes, big concern is people coming out of there is just, I think it's gonna create like a line 
um, we have no stoplight to get out on Blanco, especially when people want to turn left. But I'm just, I guess my concern is, you know, that plugging up this street because it's a dead end and that's our only way out. Um, and also, are you, are you gonna have like outdoor music or, I mean, I like the idea I can walk there, but my other concern is music late at night, you know? In uh, yeah, we, we start, uh, let me address the music piece, Josh, and if you want to address maybe the, the some of the traffic stuff. Uh, so, yes. um, so in terms of music and things of that nature, uh, transparently, there would probably be events that, that might be held in terms of promotional events. Um, uh, but uh, our goal is, again, to make this uh, a family friendly environment and, you know, friendly to the community. So it's not to create a headache for the community. So uh, our hours of operation, we don't anticipate changing, you know, uh, anywhere uh, along in the future. So we're 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 going to stay pretty strict to the you know kind of nine p.m. Uh, close time, so that uh, you know we respect okay. the neighborhood in terms of lights and music and traffic and things of that nature. Okay. I'll address I'll address a little bit of the I'll address a little bit about the traffic, and then Josh will add more. The existing structure is only about. 15 at maybe 13 or 1500 square feet. Charlie, you can probably confirm on that. So occupancy is not significant. And so even in terms of, you know, occupants and, you know, potential traffic, there's not a lot. Most of that back lot that you see there now that's kind of covered in, you know, there's really nothing there. So a big portion of that will actually be the actual microbrewery itself with some seating area. So that does increase occupancy opportunity there, but uh, the rest of that will all be, you know, actual parking. Um, so uh, just to meet the, the requirements of the city. So uh, we don't anticipate uh, this creating any sort of bottleneck, but, you know, Josh, I can let you from an engineering perspective, maybe you can add some color to that. Yes, sir. Um, so traffic is usually one of the, the drivers when you're laying out a site like this, especially on a corner. Um, if, if I could have it my way, um, we would we would have access off of Blanco Road. Um, it's a tech stop road, and there's already several driveways through here, and so there's some access requirements, uh, access spacing. I'm sorry, requirements that we have to deal with. Um, so all that to say is they they won't allow us to get the the state won't allow us to get um, access off of Blanco Road, and nor is it really a safe condition. Um, Running a business, it would definitely be better, but it's just, it's not feasible in this location. So um, with that, we kind of turned our attention towards the Becker frontage. And, you know, your concern um, was kind of one of the things we looked at um, when we pushed this entrance, you know, way towards the rear of the project. Um, generally, you kind of want you know, your entrance to kind of be more towards the kind of busy area, but we wanted to save that for, for pedestrians. We wanted to kind of isolate the two um, where, you know, here's the event area and here's the parking area. And that gives us, um, you'll see the dimension I added on here, that gives us really good stacking from Becker Street. Um, you know, we don't anticipate um, a big stacking event, but it's there. Um, and it won't be blocking drives uh, as much as you know as reasonably possible. So, are ca cars going to be allowed to park along the side there? Is that what those markers are? Um, the, nothing different than what's today. Um, you know, I'm sure. You know, you look up and down the street. There's a there's a car or two there. Uh, some people yeah. use it. I I I oh. I've driven Becker. <laughs> It's not the widest street, you know, it's built to no, older standards, right? So, so. Jen, the thing about the parking is that even if uh, the city would allow street parking, they still need to provide a specific number of parking spaces inside their own boundaries. So that number on the street doesn't count toward the total number of parking spaces they need to provide based on the plan that they use they're proposing. Correct. Yeah, we, we just showed that. Um, 
just because it is a reality that people could park there. Um, parking is allowed along the street today, and it, it, you know, unless something changes, it will be in the future, but it's, it's not part of our planning for the site. Well, the problem with people parking right there along the street, especially when they get really close to Blanco, is when, if I was coming in from Blanco to take a left to go home and people are parked there and there's other people parked to pull out, then there's really, it really makes it hard to get through if people are parking along the side and I come in off of Blanco to take a left and there's cars parked on, or there's cars trying to leave Becker Street and I'm trying to pull in to Becker Street and there's cars there. It's only like a one lane, you know, there only, there wouldn't be much room to get through. So I don't know if you're going to back up. I don't know yeah. where you start letting people park, you know, as close to the corner, because that could cause a problem trying to pull in on Becker. Gene, that, that was our dilemma. You know, um, the Becker uh, property we put in purely to alleviate kind of the traffic. The um, East Blanco one, we could put a restaurant there, use come some of that area for the parking slots that's open, have a smaller proposed uh, brewery and office building and kind of clamp it up. But we felt by including the second lot, we could take away a lot of the traffic that would potentially park on the street and put it in the lot. So we were trying to accommodate, uh, you know, the ease of use for the residents. And uh, in your situation, you one of the lucky ones, Gene, you can just walk down the road. So yeah, we'll be so I'm, I'm talking more access when I'm in my car, you know, what will happen if people will start crowding that street pulling in yep. and pulling out. That, that's a great point. So this is a current lot line. Um, these are two different lots. And Luis and his group did purchase the second lot because, you know, just, just for the parking aspect of this prop, prop, property, I'm sorry. Um, otherwise, we'd be trying to kind of fit it in this area, which just really doesn't work. Um, Gene, as far as, you know, the availability to park on Becker Street, um, we wouldn't be proposing, nor could we, that that's a, that's a city, um, you know, something the city would have to address, but we wouldn't be proposing a change to what the current condition is. Okay. So where the parking lot is, is that, <clears throat> is that currently a resident? It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this project is presented as two requests and the request to rezone the property that is on residential, the one that Josh has the cursor on top, and then the special use permit for the craft alcohol production. It would be considering the whole um, development, the front and the back, but the brewery itself would be placed on the um, Blanco site. Correct. Anybody else with questions and comments? I had a question. Go ahead, Lena. Yes. Um, is it even an option over by the Shell Station? Behind the Shell Station, is that property owned by Shell, the gasoline, the service station? Linda, I don't know that. Because that would yeah, be great if, you, if the parking could come out that way, you know, or have two exits or entrances, you know? Yeah. We don't, we don't, we, we certainly don't, don't, don't know the answer to that question. We don't know who owns that property. Yeah, well. It would be nice if it could access Plant Street then you'd have two ways. You'd have yeah. another way out. Exactly. <laughs> well, I've got a, a proposal. If the community will support 
the project and we will earn enough proceeds to buy that property and do exactly as as you just stated now all, all joking aside that that we we don't know the uh we we certainly don't know the owners of that property yeah, okay That's that's all the gas station. Um, I yeah, just I just looked it up here. Mm -hmm. So on the appraisal district. Uh, what is what is occupying that little house that's next to you? What's who's what's going on with it? Is there is there a business in there? This one right here. Is a residence. A I can't I can't put back into a home. It was a business. It was the old bail bondsman. Oh, right. I develop it and now it looks like someone's living there okay I'm not. surprised they're not in this meeting <laughs> Jean were you talking about this one between yes. us okay yeah there's already existing kind of trees and shrubs in that area kind of uh, Dividing the two property lines fairly well in terms of noise and things of that nature is also and the the actual office and brewery building would also take a pretty good chunk of that too to provide them with enough of a noise shelter and things of that nature. Hmm. To answer that question earlier, um, this the shell owns this entire property here. Um, we are 27,919 and 27,923. This is that shell. That's a lot of wasted space behind it. Yeah. Oh, kidding. It looks like a good place to do donuts. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. So, are you able to hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, now we can. And thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I was just trying to say that the existing way that hairbenders is there's a driveway so people can't park so close to um blanco and that would change with your plan and i think it would create a harder time for people to try to turn on to becker and then yes. it's it's hard when people are parked on both sides of the street anyway and i had a question about whether or not you were going to add a sidewalk i couldn't tell based on your drawing because we don't need people on top of double park or not double park but you know what i mean like Sides parked on both sides of the street, or just sure. your side of the street. Um, so I'll take this one, Luis. Could you? Yeah. I might not be following your first uh, question, um, but let me just okay, right there, going. that driveway. So this one will be we'll be right. closing this one. Uh, I think that's right. what she's Which referring to, Josh. She's saying park. she she she's saying that since that is open today, that prevents you know, folks from, from parking there today. Okay. And so her, her concern yeah. is that closing it would, would, you know, allow people to park. Allow there. more people to park. Yeah. Um, yeah. Potentially, um, but it would get rid of the conflict of people trying to get in, in and out of this location. Um, you know, basically moving this further down to, you know, roughly right in here. Yeah. And another concern is, I, I mean, I think new, yeah. new places in town are, are wildly, you know, popular new places. Everybody wants to try them out. I can even see people start parking in front of houses down the street, you know, and then walk to it. And that I see that as an issue because I'm so very close. I could just see them parking right in front of my house also. And Um, the second right. question regarding sidewalk, I can, I can, I can answer that one completely. So any commercial development or really any development on residential too has to build sidewalk along their frontage. Um, so we'll be completing, you know, there's sidewalk along the Blanco Street. We'll be completing that around the perimeter of the tract, and then there will be ADA um, on our side here. Okay. certainly understand the concern around the parking and the street. I, I think to Josh's point, that's just not something that necessarily we would control. We're certainly not, we're certainly trying to discourage it by, by 
building the, the whole entire parking lot there at the 111 Becker. Um, and, uh, but certainly understand that concern around that street parking. Uh, and it's something that we can consider and, and talk through, but I, I, I don't know that there's a, a way to prevent it, at least from, from our standpoint. Right. That, and that, that I know of. Well, another concern would be that it would, could bring down my property value because of the establishment being right there. You know, it's not going to be a quiet neighborhood anymore. I don't, I don't think with the traffic and people and music, food trucks. Well, the, you know, I think today, even without a special use permit, you know, there could be, we, we essentially, you know, could just do the, the restaurant uh, today and uh, whether it was us or any other business could establish, you know, some, you know, some sort of property that we're trying to be as respectful to the property values and just the community as a whole by, you know, kind of staying within the confines of what we call kind of family hours and, um, and then, you know, putting up structures there that are going to be appealing you know, to, to that community and that neighborhood where the goal is to raise property values there in terms of being able to, you know, have places to go within walking distance more for the actual neighborhood or the neighbors as opposed to, you know, say tourists on Main Street, you know, kind of having an off main location for the actual neighbors. Uh, and yes, Luis is correct. Based on the C2 zoning category, uh, the restaurant would be allowed, they would need to provide parking, they need to make some adjustments on that. Uh, but yes, he could have it. Yeah, so I just pulled up the existing zoning map just so everybody can see, you know, the like you would expect along Blanco and your major thoroughfares, it is commercial. Um, it's not always used that way. Um, case in point, the, the maybe business, maybe house next door. Um, but really keeping that consistency on this lot is just adding the parking on this parcel um, to kind of complement it. And I think our intention would be along the way to, oh, sorry, Charlie, just one last thought. Yeah, I think our intention would be and our commitment would be along the way to, to communicate actively with, with the neighbors and the community to, you know, uh, display renderings and things of that nature. Obviously, we're extremely early in the process where we haven't gone through the expense of doing that without, you know, one, hearing from the neighbors and two, you know, going through, you know, planning and zoning committee approvals. But, you know, I think that that would be a fair thing to do is to, is to you know, share and communicate uh, what the plans look like and things of that nature so that everyone uh, that lives close by can feel comfortable about one property values and things of that nature as well. Where, um, quick question on um, the parking lot rezoning that would go from an R1 to what? Commercial. Commercial C2 with It'd a special use permit. So, so you'd be it can, permit. Go ahead. It could be a C1 or a C2. Uh, the C, the R1M does not allow to be even as an accessory use to the C2. It cannot be uh, used as a parking lot. And a C1 and a C2 would allow because of the special use permit for the microbrewery and the whole site. So we'd be permanently changing that to a C1 or two. Well, Sarah, I think the special use permit. Um, goes with the project to allow parking on that on that parcel so it would be i believe and you're you're the expert on this but uh, i believe that would only apply to this specific project and if the project changed then it would go away yes so but the zoning category stays okay. if you rezone the site for a c1 and uh, in a couple of years louis project doesn't go anywhere the special use per, the special use permit um, approval also can expire, and you would have the C 
uh, the C1 zoning category over there. The advantage of having it all on the same zoning categories, because even as part of a C2 on the front, you're not allowed to have a commercial category, a commercial use in a R1M. So you would need that to be able to have the whole site. I'm not sure if that explains your question. So the R1 is, is that like something the city or the county decides to change it or is that a vote type thing? So the process, the request is presented first to Planning and Zoning Commission and they make a recommendation to city council and city council, we have public hearings on both um, situations. Planning and Zoning Commission has the public hearing and city council has two public hearings for the request. And at the end of the day, City Council is the one that decides the request. Uh, they, they have the option um, to approve or deny, especially when you're talking about a special use permit, you can put some conditions. Um, it's a, we, we're always asking the community to participate and give us their opinion. And sooner we get you guys involved in the process. And this is why this meeting was put together the better. So Luis know what to expect, know how far or how much effort he needs. If the community really doesn't like, he knows right now that it's not going to uh, be a very successful project. If he understands that, yes, he needs some adjustments, but it can be something that he can still accomplish and make the business work for him. That's kind of the idea of this meeting. But during the whole process, you guys are going to be notified and going to be posting on public uh, meetings on the Planning and Zoning Commission and City Council. I think from our vantage point, um, we would we would love if this lot could stay R1M and allow parking, you know, allow a special use permit to park on it. You know, same project, but, but keep that base zoning. Uh, that's just not allowed in the city's code. So in order to get our special use permit to park on there, we have to rezone. So what what happens if these cars parked on the side here actually do create a problem with people trying to pull into the street and it being like a one car at a time type thing? That's what I'm envisioning it's gonna happen because that is not a very wide street. Is there, is there any way you can indent your property to put the side parking there instead of let it be on the street? Like. Um, well, yeah. from, from my experience with the city, they wouldn't, wouldn't allow that. You know, it's a, it's a public street. Um, usually they try to avoid on street parking, um, but uh, that's, that's not really something I can answer, you know, what, what the city would allow within there right away. I think we would, you know, we would help however they'd let us, but um, well, maybe, I, I guess that would really be the city's choice. Same way it's the city's choice to let people park on, you know, park on the curb or not right now. Yeah, yeah. the it's street's a, just not very wide. It's not it's wide. It's a safety like thing. Others. So if you if you create barriers and there's an emergency down in back of lane and you have a fire truck that needs a minimum spacing and you have a turning radius and all that. So it's more of a safety, making sure we have the clears on the right of way, especially on an intersection like that. Yeah, fortunately, new city standards create a lot wider streets. Um, so I don't, don't have this problem with, with newer streets, but you know, this is an older area of town, which you know has a lot of appeals. But this is this is one of the things we got to deal with. Sarah, I have a question for you. Um, I mean, I assume in, I assume as the business operators, owners, we wouldn't be allowed to put any sort of no parking, uh, you know, signs or just prohibit parking there. Is that um, is that correct for on the street? I don't think it's something can be done. I can look into it, but I don't think so. It's still a public public street, and you're still you're still allowed to park in it. Yeah, with permission, we could, Louise, but that that would be the city's call. Yeah, 
and not, and not planning of, that would come down to public works. Yeah, and this is one of the reasons uh, like they have to provide the minimum parking standards inside their parcel to avoid having customers parking like a Becker Lane. So based on the use, you have parking requirements. Restaurants have more parking requirements than um, retail or anything like that. So the parking is calculated based on that. The idea is to avoid as much as possible to have people parking in the streets. Are 18 spaces meeting the minimum requirements? Yes. Good. Based on what? Based on square footage or? Yeah, or the uh, zoning code has square per square footage uh, requirements. Per square footage of the building or per, so, I mean, but there's no seating in the building. It's right. per use. Yeah. So, use. I mean, I look at, I look at what you have there and there's one, two, three, four, there's probably 15, 20 tables. So you're gonna be, you're talking, you know, at maximum capacity, 60, 70 people, 80 people. And we got 18 parking places. So there, there's a guarantee they're gonna be parking up and down the street. And then it's a one-way street. There's no access any other way. So you got families with young children that live down the way. They're gonna be going down, making U-turns by the road down there and coming back. Yes. Yep. So that's, that's one concern. And then the other concern, um, I, I get it that it's a C2 zoning and you get a, a restaurant, that's fine. Uh, but we're permanently changing an R1, rezoning it forever to, uh, to commercial. Would you rather the project not have the parking lot. So that lot where all the parking spaces are, which is currently a residence, we could leave out of the project. So it cost us a lot more to include it in the project to kind of get everything off the off the street. So with with um, East Blanco being zone C2, everything could be put on that lot. We wouldn't get you'd have, the, put, you'd have to put parking on that lot too, correct? Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this would be kind of an alternative um, where we fail down and just put it on that one. That could definitely happen. The way we looked at it was let's be a little more open minded, let's invest more so the neighbors can see that the intention is good. And every effort is being made to restrict the traffic, the exposure to parking. But it's something by nature, it's already zone C2. It can be a restaurant. And I just feel if it didn't have the, the parking lot behind, there would be some very strong concerns. Understanding that the lot behind us is owned by us too. So we wouldn't want to cripple ourselves in that lot either. Yeah, so I just, I, the, but but we're getting a creep of of zoning, so you you creep into the R ones with a with a C one C two, and then let's say you're highly successful and you buy the house behind that, and now let's let's zone it because we need more parking. So it's just I'm not sure why when we just did completely rezone the city, now we're talking about rezoning a commercial residential lot. I think I think to Charlie's point, we it, it's not something that has to happen. I think we were it was an intention to, you know, create a buffer and to avoid street parking and things of that nature. We can certainly meet the requirement. Um, we think within the confines of the 802 East Blanco. So and your name is appearing as Laura Lee. I assume that's not. Yeah, that's not. That's my wife. She's okay. Yeah, this is okay. Rex. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, Rex. So if that if that is, it, it, does that seem like something? I mean, I just think that still doesn't solve part of the concern, you know, that Gene had, which was the parking. Um, and, you know, again, whether it was the, our group or any other group, they could come in today and put in a, a, a restaurant in that C2802 Blanco 
um, I think you would still have potentially that parking situation. We could certainly, how we would eliminate some of that outdoor seating, right? Which we thought added to the, you know, just kind of family ad environment atmosphere um, and make it more of a family atmosphere versus kind of just a, a bar or brewery mm -hmm. that style. Um, and, um, but would that be something that you think would be looked at more advantageously by the neighbors or at least just you, Rex? Um, yeah, I, I uh, <laughs> I'm torn to be perfectly honest. I, I, I'm concerned about changing zoning because that, that um, I get a little concerned about the creep of changing zoning over and over and over again. Um, on the flip side, if you do that, you're, you're really taken away from all your out, uh, outside seating. So I'm not, I'm not sure if it's a, you know, if I mean, you could still, we would still, we could still have some, it would just be minimal. You know, it would mm -hmm. be very minimal right there where Josh is doing there, maybe some in the front area could be kind of some decking kind of the way, very similar to, you know, dodging duck example that Josh spoke of, but <clears throat> all, all, most of that parking would reside in where those tables and uh, are. In, in do, the you, um, do you anticipate being able to use parking across the street? Rex, we look into that uh, from the, the, the uh, Masons and, yes. you know, ask if we could have 12 or 13, I don't know. Um, see what they would come up with it is kind of a busy road to cross so there is some concerns with that but heck people do it all the time down main street going across from bar to bar there so yes we that's true at least safer than main street so there's a safe the other, awesome pretty close to it it would be the other way josh it would actually be directly across blanco oh yeah yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, we had already, yeah we had talked about that um yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rex, there's there's no there's no guarantees there. Honestly, we 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 didn't go down the road of necessarily talking mm -hmm. or you know, those legalities involved with with that and folks crossing. I think we certainly, as the business operators, we couldn't stop them from parking there, say on a Saturday or something like that. Yeah. But, you know, we, yeah. I'm sure we'd hear. I'm sure we'd hear from them uh, over time from that from that group that that is their property. All right, so that those are my concerns. I'm, I'm not, I'm not hit, sitting here saying I'm against it, because I'm sort of torn with, you know. I think there's some good things about it. I'm a little concerned about the traffic. Yeah, uh, that's my biggest concern. The traffic, and parking right there on the street. Mm -hmm. Would if you look at Dodging Duck on a Friday or Saturday night, and you go down. Uh, Mesquite, there's cars parked both sides almost all the way down. Um, but they can go any direction there. Yeah, uh, They don't have to go back out on the river road. In this case, every car has got to go back into the neighborhood, turn around, come back, and go to Blanco. And there'll be a line getting out. Yeah. So that's, those are, those are my concerns. Thanks, Rex. Appreciate it. I, you know, don't have an answer for you on that at, at the moment, honestly, that we can address. We can certainly make a commitment to, I think somebody on the call brought up a good idea around the the gas station property. You know, is there a way to potentially access, lease some of that space for through, you know, for through access? Um, at that point, it, the coal project would just become cost prohibitive, honestly. And you know, not not worth it, uh, but we can certainly make a commitment to at least have those conversations. Yeah, Luis, maybe a maybe an alternative is connecting the back of our parking lot out. So maybe it's uh, one way. Is right? that the, is that the gas station there, Josh? The the one where you were just showing there? Yes. Yeah, okay. Is it. So. It wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be much really to connect these. You know, this is the back of okay. our parking lot. Um, okay. May, maybe, you know, of course, they would have to want that as well. But 
sure. if, if that were something we could we could figure out with them, well, then this would essentially work as an in, and then that could be an out or something along those lines. So I'm surprised that the people that are living in the house right next to this aren't on here. They may be and not saying anything, but um, what and how soon were you guys wanting to get started on this development? Like if it goes through. The yeah, I think. I'll go, go ahead, Charlie. I think you cut off a little bit, buddy. No, I was just going to say we're going to go as soon as we possibly can once we've got all the approvals in place. But we are very open to taking out the Becker Street parking lot uh, uh, and maybe utilizing some of the that to go and buy parking from the um, Masons across the road, if that would be a better alternative. I don't know so much about taking that parking lot out because then you'd really have people parking on the street just to be on that side of the road. No, so agreed. Gene, yeah, it's, a little, it's a catch-22. I think <laughs> that's kind of where we're stuck at right now is I think, you know, there's a, there, yeah, there's a concern about the rezoning. The whole intent of the rezoning was for the parking to alleviate or discourage any parking on the street. Um, also not something obviously that we have control of. So what we have control of was establishing enough parking to, to help with, uh, with parking uh, in terms of and discouraging that from the street. Uh, but it does change the, it does change, you know, the entire plan, right? So, you know, at, at that point, if, if we're, yeah. if, it, you know, it might just be a whole new site needed and things of that nature. So if, if that's something that is just not, uh, amenable to the community or the neighborhood, and then you know there might be a, a different site needed at this point, uh, but uh, or uh, something that we can discuss. There's obviously we we just talked about the potential for through traffic. Again, we don't we don't own that property on that side, on the Shell side or that gas station. Are they even open to that? Would they want to do that? Are there any other considerations that we need to go through? So it's not an, we don't have enough information to probably speak on that today, but we're certainly committed to do that. Um, I think Sarah will just, we'll, I, I don't know where to go from here in terms of, I think we appreciate everybody's feedback. Yes. I think it's, I think it's good feedback. I think it's valid feedback. I just want to make sure that, yeah, you know, you know, does this pr prevent, do we halt PNZ nine, on 911 uh, or, or where do we go from here? So that's totally up to you guys. Uh, PNZ will have a report of this meeting and, um, uh, and they can watch the YouTube video as well. Um, I would also let everybody know that the process itself, it takes a few weeks, to say the least. So if they go to the Planning and Zoning Commission on September 11th, they would be possibly, possibly going to city council on October. So in all those uh, meetings, their public hearing, you would receive a notification. I'm not sure, Jane, if you would. We, we normally notify the neighbors within uh, 200 feet of the site. Uh, we can expand this a little bit more based on the people that showed up to this meeting and we can make sure that I have you guys name. I can try to find you, make sure you receive a notification or you're informed of those meetings or you can just send me an email and I'll make sure you have that as well. Um, but the timeline for this to go to PNZ is up to the applicant. Uh, we receive the applications, we work with them, making sure the information that goes to the community is as accurate as possible, but staff doesn't stop it. So it's going to be totally up to you, just saying that. Um, okay. Does anybody has any more questions or has comments? I would also like you guys know that uh, if you want to send me any question, any email, you can go straight to the city's website and looking look for the planning department. You're going to find my email there, or you can just email to the bond at bernie-tx.gov or planning. 
uh, at bernie-tx.gov. All those emails are um, checked constantly if you have any questions or you want more information about the project. I, I do have a question. Is uh, will it be available to look at this this uh, conceptual drawing? So uh, the recording of tonight's meeting is going to be available on the YouTube channel tomorrow around uh, lunchtime, I believe. Uh, and uh, I imagine uh, if the applicant is fine sharing that it's going to be on the video. You can look at it as well. Sure. So there, there will be no, uh, there will be no floor plan of the uh, set-in eating area, the kitchen, the bar the, area. Such the as internal, that. the internal part of the project right now is not um, considered because those are uh, internal um, details or architectural details that are not required for this stage of the process. They do have to have some idea of the spacing inside, but it doesn't need to be uh, shown to us because it's a more of when you're doing the project itself. It's just in the project that is built, it needs to be really close to this, but if it's not 50 by 20, if it's 19 by 20, that's not gonna impact uh, the overall impervious cover or occupation rate. Sure, sure. Will transportation be doing any kind of impact study on their end? For part of their application, they need to provide uh, at least an initial uh, traffic impact analysis. It's a peak hour trip generation form. And depending on how high the pick the trips, the number of trips they're generating would trigger like more of a traffic impact. Josh, have you looked into that? Not yet. Um, we're really here today to try to understand the neighbors a little bit better and, and make any modifications we, we can. But I will let you know that even considering the size and some of the uses, I don't think this would necessarily trigger a full traffic impact analysis. You're probably going to have like a turn lane evaluation form that would have to be added to it, but not a full blown TIA based on the size of this development, but I'm yeah. not an engineer. <laughs> yes, ma'am, that's that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, you know, it, it's more about safety than the actual, the, the TIA worksheet on this one for me, but I'm, I'm right there with you. In terms of the internal layout, I, the, the house, the, the existing structure there, the layout of that, if, if you have been inside the uh, dodging duck is a very similar layout structure, and we would anticipate to uh, for improvements to that existing structure, uh, and the layout would be very similar to that. The, the, the layout of the actual home is, is very the, of what used to be the home is very similar to that building at the dodging duck, and we would keep that in a very similar way as well. And it's a similar size. Correct. It's almost. It's almost the. It's almost a, a duplicate uh, floor plan. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else has questions, comments? Yes. Just looking at Dodge and Duck. You know, that's the original building, and then of course the patio and all that's been added. And then there's the brewery. So. You can see a, a lot of similarities between the two sites. Yeah, I just think that traffic analysis thing is going to have to be, especially people trying to park, and a lot of them will try to park as close as they can to the intersection. So I've seen them do it already just for the hair salon. Miss Jean, would it would it be your preference to see, you know, this parking lot go away and and you know brought into this area? Well, I, I think what I, I like the layout just because I think with the picnic tables and stuff, it will it'll give it the character that you want it. It'll give it that curb appeal mm -hmm. as far as people wanting to visit there. 
um, like I said, my biggest thing is I don't like people parking on this next to the street because they used to park under that big tree that used to be there next to the little building just to be in the shade. And when I would turn on to Becker, I'd have to go around it, get in the other lane to go around it. So that's why I'm saying, and, and I can imagine if it was full of cars, um, it will be a one-way lane for quite a ways. So I guess the study on turning and seeing if two cars can get by each other <laughs> is going to be will be a tell-all. Yeah, I think uh, I think we'd be open. You know, speaking for Luis, I think we'd be open to you know no parking signage and no outlet signage and, and things like that. Um, if the city will allow that. Yeah, that's the street department thing, but I don't think they would have issues making sure the information is clear for people, especially if you have an increased um, number of cars going in. Yeah, I think I think our commitment would be to do anything that we can under our control or whatever the city will allow. Um, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're trying to screen this area and you know make this a, a really good pedestrian area. So having having parking right there is not not ideal for that for us. I'm sure it'll look nicer than what's there right now. It's just, <laughs> it's, you know, I, I sure hope so. That's the idea. <laughs> so this this is Rex again, and and I would I would agree with Gene and. Um, the, probably my biggest issue is the traffic. And I got, like I said, some concerns over the rezoning, but based on how you have it drawn up, you know, if, if it's gonna happen, the option of having the outside seating is probably better than making that parking. Mm. That's just my bias. I'm, I'm, uh, I still have my concerns, but I would agree with Gene on that. You know, there's a there's an empty lot right across the street too. Now they tore down that little duplex that was there. Um, I don't know the guy who owns it, but I don't know what they're going to do with it. That would that'd be nice if they, <laughs> he'd let people park in there too. No kidding. We've looked <clears throat> at that. Please. Yeah. Are you talking about right in front of 111 Becker or kind of right in yeah, front right, of right both here, I think this is gone now, right here, yeah. right across from your parking lot. This is gone. Yeah, yeah, we did see that. Yeah. Hey guys, I, I apologize. I joined this uh, a little late and I'm sure you've answered this question. No but we'll hear it again. No worries. <laughs> are you guys planning on having live entertainment out there? Yeah, we answered it in the beginning. So the, the goal is to have, uh, you know, make it a family atmosphere with uh, hours of operation somewhere in the 11 a.m. 11 a.m. to about 9 p.m. Uh, as I mentioned, transparently, there may be a need for promotional events, uh, you know, something where maybe there is some, some, some live music or something like that, but it would never go any later than 9 p.m. And uh, we don't anticipate that, that changing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And it won't be rap music. <laughs> well, how late does is the establishment going to stay open? You may stop the music at nine, but how late is the establishment? Well, we open? 9 PM. Every, yeah, 9 p.m. I mean, it, so it's 9 p.m. Oh. for hours of operation entirely. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Kind of lock the duck. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments, anybody? As I mentioned, the recordings are gonna be available through our YouTube channel. And uh, if you have questions, you can reach out to us or the applicant and uh, we'll do our best to answer all the questions as fast as possible. I will let, I will need to know, Louise, uh, how you guys wanna proceed. Um, you have, um, Three a few days. days to figure that out and you can let yeah. me know and we'll make adjustments on that 
because if the item is going to go to the PNZ uh, meeting, I need to send notification to the neighbors and the site plan would be attached to that notification. So we need that um, sooner rather than later. Well, Rex and Jean, I think, you know, mostly you, you guys have the largest concerns around the, 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 the parking. So honestly, we have three days before August 18th to make a commitment to present at the Planning and Zoning Committee. We don't want to do that if that's something that presents, you know, a lot of heartburn. Uh, the last thing we want to do is make this a nuisance for the community or for your street or for your neighborhood. Um, we will give you our commitment that we will look at options, specifically that that gas station option as a through potentially for that parking lot, maybe for an exit that way. Uh, we certainly will are open our conversations and and we recognize that that's probably going to be an added expense, but at least that you know that throughput or that through through way. Uh, but we're certainly, you know, open to that. It, given that commitment, or is that something that you are okay with us still presenting at the Planning and Zoning Committee or proceeding at least with that? Well, this I is Rex, and I, I would say, yeah, absolutely. I think you should uh, you should do that, and any other neighbors that um, that want to have voice at the Planning and Zoning meeting should do that. But I, I think you should move forward. That's my opinion. I guess I'm checking it. I'm checking to make sure that that's enough of a commitment from us to to you as the neighbors. That if we go, obviously we don't have control over what those what those folks are going to tell us. They may say, you know, heck no, you can't use our property for through traffic. But our commitment is to have the conversation with them at the, at the, at the very least. So I, guess yeah. Yeah, I, I also think, I also think you ought to be talking to the people, the um, Masons across the street. Absolutely. Yeah, there's sure. a lot of parking over there and honestly, it's going to get used anyways. Sure. So, I mean, I, agree. I would be parking there if I wasn't sure. on the street. So. Well, Luis, if you could just, get it so there's no parking on becker street <laughs> that would be nice because i could just see it really get congested but i mean that would keep the street clean people can move you know coming and going a lot easier than if people are parking there i definitely well, don't really want people parking in front of my house either but um if they if it could just be no parking on the street in front of residences. That would be nice, but I don't know if that's something that can be made a rule or not. I just don't know that that's something that we could control or, have, you know, it's not anything that we could make a, a commitment to, but we can certainly, yeah. um, we could, we could certainly, uh, I, I think Sarah agreed and Josh mentioned, you know, that, you know, we could certainly put up signs or something like that as long as the city agrees, but Beyond that, I don't think that, it, that it's in our control to, to do that, but we can certainly look at other options in terms of traffic throughput or, or using other parking areas like the Mason's Lodge and, and talking to those businesses. Yeah, that yeah would there's, be some, there's some requirements that the street departments would have to review um, on the signage and all that. Uh, it goes beyond my department, so I'm not the best person to talk about that one. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think we all want the same thing there. <laughs> um, just not sure if it's possible and, and uh, the people that can make that decision uh, uh, are here today. Okay. okay, they watch. They do watch. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. If you have questions, uh, please put me an email. And um, I appreciate you guys presenting and showing up. Yes, thank Thanks, you. Sarah. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Great, great question. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you guys. Josh. Okay. Can I get your name, please? My name is Sarah.